Okay, let's go back to the note taking output two document. So this is just an example, a bit premature, just to let you know how to do chapter two. Okay, uh, definition of key concepts. Okay, okay. So the first paragraphs. I think I can end, increase the zooming. I want to show you about the integration. So it means I read two sources and then they define poverty and then I want to combine the findings or the definitions in one paragraph. So this is what integration or synth synthesis means. You are going to learn a bit more actually, I think in the next term. So let's look at this sentence. Poverty is generally defined as deprivation in well-being, bracket the source, World Bank, and exist in a society when da, 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 since I quote the exact works, words, of a sentence, I have to use double quotation mark, otherwise I would commit plagiarism. Then brackets, the source, rebellion. And then the next paragraph, the different dimensions on poverty, and then I consulted three sources. Then I make my own summary notes, and then I write this paragraph with the aid of bullets, okay? If you have valid reasons to use bullets, as in my case, I want to highlight the five key dimensions of poverty, then it makes sense to use bullets. But for the bullets, remember, the bullet should not be too long, too tax intensive. So strictly speaking, my fifth bullet is a bit too long, to be honest with you. Four lines in total. And then you can actually insert figure to aid your written explanation. So I insert this figure to explain the food energy intake approach to distinguish poor from non-poor. And again, I consult two sources and then I show the integration synthesis okay and then i write my own summary paragraphs to explain this food energy intake approach and then the next one the next page still the same document and then just to show you how to write the review of past empirical studies okay and then self-explanatory i want you to focus on the words that are highlighted in different colors so just to show you the linking words and so forth do you see the word and first the authors, instead of typing the surnames of the authors again and again, you can use different words, actually, different approaches. And again, look at this. I'll use the word decline and then drop instead of always using the same word degrees, actually. So I hope you will go through this second page. But later in the semester, you are going to learn how to write up uh, the review of past empirical study session. But this document note taking output to would be a good start for you to have some pre some preliminary understanding on how to do chapter two so i can close this one and then for the next one oh, let me go back to the folder note taking output three this is another example again how to write up uh, the explanation on the different poverty indices so again another example of how to write your chapter two and again i can insert tables to aid my written explanation so when you have time please go through this word file note taking output three okay and then the next one note taking output four okay again Another example, how to write the session on the review of past empirical studies. Again, I want you to focus on the words that are highlighted in yellow or in, in different colors, red funds actually. Okay. Self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go through it. Okay. And one hint is that when you review the past empirical studies, you can link the results of these studies with the theoretical model. Are these empirical findings do they conform with the theoretical arguments or actually a bit contradictory? So this is why you see the text in red here. So I highlight, so I summarize the review of past empirical studies. I think this is an economics uh, education topic about the impact of matric economics on undergraduate economics performance. So I, after I review the first group of studies, look at this long paragraph, then I conclude the sentence. Oh, these results conform with the conclusion derived from the grade 12 Im impact theoretical model as discussed in section 2.3. And then later in the next paragraph, I review some weird studies that the empirical findings are a bit odd, a bit weird, okay? They don't seem to conform with the theory. So at the end, I would say, oh, these results are uh, 
are in line. Oh, they are in line actually. These results are in line with the academic boredom theory that was revealed in 2.3. But let's say, let's say these studies don't conform with the theories, then how are you going to end the paragraph? Then you can say, to conclude, these studies are not in line with the theory that was revealed in section 2.3. Okay. And again, I would really rely on your self-discipline to go through this one-page document. Again, this is a good start for you to know a little bit about how to do chapter two. So I repeat for chapter two, there are three parts, defining key concepts, review the core theories, and then review of past empirical studies. But more on this chapter two a bit later. So let's go back to the note-taking thing. So note-taking system, okay. I think this is the official document from Cornell University about the Cornell note-taking system. So I rely on you to go through this page. And then the note-taking template, I think I already opened it in the previous video. Okay, this is how the blank template looks like. And then when you have time, you can watch this note-taking video. I'm not going to play the video, okay? I rely on you to play the video. And now this is the one. Uh, practice L5, the writing workshop. So that relates to this uh, sixth PDF file, Houghton and Kendall. Let me open it again. Remember from the previous video, I said uh, this for this book, I want to make use of this chapter because this chapter, chapter four, explain the three FGT poverty indices quite well, including the pros and coins, the strengths and shortcomings. Okay. And then assuming from practice L5, I really wrote the summary notes. Actually, strictly speaking, you are supposed to be the one completing this uh, template. Okay, so let's look at the answers. I put the source here, right on the top. The key concept or the key theme from this chapter, it is about FGT poverty indices. And then for, the, uh, for this column, I define each uh, index or F0 poverty headcount ratio, F1 poverty gap index, F2 P2 sorry P2 square poverty index, and then later I discuss the shortcomings of each index. Okay, and then this is the conclusion. This is the ultimate summary of this chapter. The three poverty measures could be derived using FGT approach. And then I want for this writing workshop, I want you to make use of the results, the summary notes from this uh, note taking template to write your own paragraphs to review. So in other words, you want to write up the definition of key concepts session. You want to first explain each poverty index before you discuss the shortcomings of each index. So can I pause for one minute and see if you can uh, write up the paragraphs? Alternatively, you can pause the video and later fast forward by one minute. But let me stop for one minute here. Okay, let's go back to the writing workshop. So I assume you really read chapter four. And then let's say you did your own note-taking template. Okay. But let's assume you use my answers. Okay. So let's hope we did more or less the same summary notes. You first define each 
poverty concept or poverty index concept and then you critically uh, look at the shortcomings of each index and then the point is how can you write up the summary paragraph so actually the answers are from note taking output three okay okay so let's go through the answers okay i'm not going to go through every single sentence actually but Let's see. Having identified the indicators of welfare and establishing the poverty line, the next step is to use the survey data to measure poverty. The most commonly used poverty measures are those proposed in 1984 by Foster. I can't pronounce the next two surnames, but in bracket FGT, which are expressed as follows. Then you show the equation and then explain what each term in the equation stands for. Otherwise, nobody can understand or fully understand the equation. And then, as I said earlier, you can make use of a table or mathematical example to explain each poverty concept. And headcount index, you first define it. This is why I highlight certain text in blue. Uh, so headcount index, H, is the proportion of population that is poor. And then you start to critically evaluate. Oh, although the index is easy to interpret, there are some shortcomings. It ignores the extent of which the poverty the poor fall below the poverty line because it fails to indicate how poor the poor are. And then you can use the sources. So in this case, my example is that I consulted two sources and they uh, criticized the shortcomings of this index in more or less the same way. Then I can group the two sources together. Okay, the integration, keep that in mind. Okay. Next one, poverty gap index. First, once again, I define what it means. Okay. This is why you see I highlighted some text in blue. I start off with the definition. I make use of a graph to aid my written explanation. And then I can provide some shortcomings. Okay. And then lastly, the last one, square poverty gap index. Okay, first of all, I make use of an equation and define it. Okay. And then again, I use a table, a numerical example to aid my written explanation. And then the shortcomings, although the square poverty gap index has clear advantages for certain purposes, such as comparing policies which aim to reach the poorest, the major criticism of it is that it is not easy to interpret and hence it is not used widely. And then the sources, by the way, I forgot to put the years actually it should be 2009. <laughs> so don't <laughs> make the same mistake as the one that I have made. Okay, so I hope it is a good start for you to learn how to use this template. So let's say you have one template for each source, then you would have like 10 tables. And then the skill is how to, how to make use of these summary templates and then write your own paragraphs. Okay, so I hope this lecture will be useful for your chapter two of your research essay or your uh, research proposal, the literature review session or the chapter.